What's going on YouTube? It's Blundzilla Video with a quick movie recommendation. So uh, in the last two videos, I made a, a collection video on all the Arrow releases that I have. Now, uh, I found myself in Cinema One today, which is the fucking overpriced, expensive movie store I've talked about in the past. But uh, they had a few things that my uncle told me about, and I just wanted to check out for myself and check out the prices and whatnot. And uh, I'll talk about those movies real fast, just because I think it's kind of interesting. Like, they had uh, Maniac, the Joe Spinell film from 1980, I believe. Uh, they had the DVD, and they had the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray was like a, a slick-looking Blue Underground, like, collector's edition. 54 bucks. They had the DVD, and the DVD was like 25 and I was like, fuck, like, uh, I, I want that nice special edition, but uh, I also, you know, it's, it's, it's times like that where it's like, okay, you know, because like, I'm a cheap fuck, you know what I mean? And like, I don't, I don't buy a lot of movies when I do. I know I want it to be good, like the movie in question in this video, but uh, I, I just, I'm like, fuck, man, like, I want that, but... You know, I'm trying to save for, like, other shit, and it's it's hard. So, like, just, like, buying, like, maybe, like, one one movie, like, every couple of weeks is torturous in a way. But I've uh, recently discovered Breaking Bad. So, uh, I'm on season three. And as of right now, I just seen the the last episode I watched that ended like this. Those two, like, uh, mafia dudes from Mexico walking into Walt's house and sitting there with an axe. And then they get the text message from the guy at the fucking the uh cluck and bell or whatever it is but uh so that's been eating up a lot of like my movie watch time or whatever and i have a fucking backlog of movies to watch anyway but like i shouldn't really be buying fucking movies to be honest with you but uh this is one that i've i've seen i've, I've heard about i did a little bit of research on and uh it was either going to be this like i said maniac they had street trash for 35 bucks and i'm like fuck i want street trash but i just i i can't bring myself to spend that much on a movie that, <clears throat> like, I have, I have, like, a, a DVD-R of it, and, like, I don't, like, I love it, I think it's an amazing film, but I don't, like, there's other things that I want, other, you know, before I start buying stuff I've already seen, like, I want to, you know, get stuff like this movie that I'm going to talk about in a second, uh, you know, they all, they had a bunch of stuff that I was looking at today, they had a bunch of, you know what, I'll, I'll say this about Cinema One, uh, they separated their Arrow and their Scream Factory, and there's, like, there's like three times the amount of Scream Factory as there as there is Arrow, and I happen to know for a fucking fact because I've seen them. Like my friend VZ Madness has been posting shit like all the time about like all these Japanese like box sets and stuff. Like they have none at this one. They have like they have the one. It's like on the cover I can it, it has like a dude that's wearing glasses and I think he's smoking and he's wearing kind of like a you know like a. Uh, an archaeological hat like when they're digging up fucking bones in the 30s you know what i mean like i think the guy's name's like it starts with an s i know that like shijin or some shit like that but uh i i see all i used to see mind you i used to see a lot of the box sets there with like all these killer movies like uh you know like all these like uh i can't even really remember any of the names i think there was one called like samurai something like but there, it was like a three pack and you know, like, they have the, uh, the George Romero three-pack, like, the before dawn, or between dawn and night, or between dawn and day, or whatever it is, like, uh, it's got a couple of, uh, films that he directed between Night of the Living Dead, or between Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead, so, uh, films in question, I don't even remember, I, is Martin in there? I think Martin is actually before, um, Dawn of the Dead, now I think about it, but, anyways, the, the movie I want to talk about right now that's playing in the background there that you can probably read, hopefully you can make out something there, it's called Yakuza Law. Uh, Yakuza Law is an anthology film. So uh, anthology film, if you're unaware of, um, if you're watching this, you probably know what the fucking anthology is. But for those who don't, that is a film that is made up of like a bunch of like uh, short films, so to speak. So like your creep show, um, your fucking asylum, Tales from the Crypt, Tales from the Hood um you know that those kind of movies there's as a matter of fact like my uncle he just gave me uh three anthologies two of them i think are wild eye and one of one of the one of them's called american nightmares and uh one of them is called uh house of ravens or something like that i think it looked it's like a, a take on the edgar Allan poe stories there's another one i think one of them was definitely directed by rusty cundiff who 
and Darren Jones or Darren Scott that wrote and directed Tales from the Hood, which I love, but I did not love Tales from the Hood too. Although I think that there was stories that were pretty fucking pretty good, like in theory, but they just weren't executed properly. Like I loved, uh, not to get off, not to go too off topic, but there was a story where uh, basically these guys, these gangsters, killed this guy. And that guy that they killed was the only person that knew where this money was stashed. And basically they used a TV, uh, you know, priest or whatever the fuck they're called. TV and TV evangelist or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, to contact this guy. And this guy's a total phony. But uh, the one time he try he does this, it actually works. And shit, it's the fan. But I, I think they could have done something cool with that. But it was just... It, it wasn't for me. And I, I love that they're still making films though. So that new Rusty Cundy film definitely gonna look out for or definitely gonna check out because i fucking got it so uh with that being said i have a lot of shit that i need to fucking watch but uh yeah yakuza law amazing amazing anthology i just finished watching it like minutes ago uh you got three stories one of them set in e in the edo period one of them set in the meiji period and one of them set in like uh modern day japan which was 1969 so this is a film from 1969 and i will say one thing there's so many things in this film that rem that you know had to have been the first time that those things were shown on film because for instance uh in the third story the modern day one there's a scene where a guy is like basically hung from a helicopter uh more to me it's more brutal than the hanging from the helicopter uh in Scarface so I was like fuck that's kind of like Scarface but this is like what like 12 or some odd years before Scarface uh you had lots like the okay i will say that w the fucking amount of gore in this film it's insane like you got like everything you want in a yakuza film you get in the third film i think like it's it's you get like people cutting their fingers off you got uh people cutting their own eyes out you got uh just ugh, chicks being manhandled like i'm not saying that's a good thing but you know like the things that you think about when you think of a film like this you're gonna get it you're gonna get uh, your your I think the first one's sort of like a love story. Like each story is is a yakuza law, so to speak. So in the first the first story, it's like you don't steal and you don't sleep with uh, married women, which people people steal. People sleep with married women, and then you know you get a story out of that, uh, which is really good. And you got really cool characters. You got <laughs> you got a beautifully shot film that does not look like it was shot in 1969. Like. One thing about these Arrow fucking releases, like this trance, I've never seen this film before, but this transfer is so goddamn good. Um, like, fuck me, man. Uh, there's a shitload of special features, of course, uh, with uh, commentaries. Um, you got the erotic, grotesque, and genre hopping. Tiro Ishii speaks a rare vintage interview with the elusive director on his vet varied career newly edited for this release so the director of this film I should point out is a guy named Tiro Ishii Ishii yeah uh apparently he's done uh he's done other films like Blind Woman's Curse Horrors of the Malformed Men uh he's known as he's the godfather of J-sploitation um it's a grueling anthology of torture spanning three district periods of Japanese history and bringing to the screen some of the most brutal methods of torture ever devised. I stand by that. I stand by that fucking statement. Uh, this, especially in the first two acts, there is no fucking lack of, of bloodshed and gore. Like, you might be seeing a few clips here. Like, when you start this film off, like, the opening credits, it's it's insane. I don't know what the fuck this, this is, uh... I don't know if you can see that, but this is my brother's uh, Xbox account. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Minecraft or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, don't get it twisted, man. Like, don't think I want to play Minecraft with you. Uh, no offense. But, uh, when you, when you want, when you watch a fucking movie like this. Oh, one other thing that I got to point out. So, th the guy in this, uh, in the second story... His name's Ogata. He's in Shogun Assassin, but I don't recognize him as being the dude from Shogun Assassin. Or recognize him from Shogun Assassin. So, I might be... Maybe it's because it's a couple of years before. Or maybe he just looks different. But I just... I, I couldn't pick him out. And, uh... Yeah, I mean... I, I should show you the, uh... The reverse cover art. 
right here. One thing about these Arrow fucking releases is they do, and even Scream Factory back in the day was doing that. They probably still are. I haven't bought a Scream Factory release in a long time, uh, just mainly because they just haven't put out anything that has like tickled my fancy. Like today, once again, when I was in Cinema One, I was looking at uh, the martial arts films, which is a, it's a joke. The section is a joke in there. There's like, I'm not even fucking lying. There's more, there's more old TV shows on VHS on this shelf, which there's maybe like tops 30. There's more of that than there is of Kung Fu films at the movie store. You got uh, movies that I want. You have, you have a, a trilogy there that I want that I could go get, but you're looking at like close to like 90 bucks for the three films, which is painful. You know what I mean? That's a painful fucking thing. And uh, I, I just, like, today when I was in there, I had a handful of fucking movies, but I was like, man, like, I gotta be realistic here, like, I, I need to, like, get one, and then watch it, and then do, do a video, you know what I mean, and enjoy it, and get to talk about it, and stuff like that, because, uh, just blowing a fucking wad of cash on a bunch of movies is, is fun and all, but it's just not something I want to do at this point in my life, so, picking them up here and there is, is good enough for me, but, uh, what I was saying was the, the films that I seen the trilogy was uh, Enter the Ninja with Franco Nero. You have uh, I think it's Revenge of the Ninja, and then you have Ninja Three: The Domination. So the first two are put out by that Kino Larbo Kino Lorber production company, and then you have uh, Scream Factory putting out Ninja Three: The Domination. So uh, like I said, you're looking at like ninety bucks right there, uh, but. One other thing I wanted to point out about these these releases are all the fucking, like, ex like not extras, or, you know, like, the little pamphlet. Like, this shit doesn't happen. It doesn't even happen in video games. Like, you know, like, full-on, full, art, full on, like, whatever the fuck that card thing was is down there now. Like, look at it. Like, you're not getting this anywhere else, man. Or maybe you are, and I'm just not fucking, pick, not fucking picking up the, uh, picking them up, but... You know, you get the idea. It, it's it's a good movie. Uh, if you're looking for, or excuse me, I'm looking for more films like this. So if you know of any good uh, Asian anthology films, they don't have to be horror. Like uh, this wasn't horror. Like uh, anything like that, just let me know. Like uh, I have a fucking a backlog of films I gotta watch, but uh, the amount of like y Yakuza films and stuff that I'm just missing out on that like. I'm seeing people posting, and I'm like, fuck, like, I want to watch that, I want to see that, I'm jealous as fuck, you know, like, these three packs, these Arrow three packs, like, they're killing me, uh, and not only that, like, there's, uh, th like, I seen, uh, a Takashi Miike film there today called 13 Ninjas or something like that, and it was, like, it was on sale for, like, seven bucks, and I didn't buy it, because I'm pretty sure I already fucking have it, and, uh, I haven't watched it, so what the fuck am I doing, why am I sitting, why am I making a YouTube video, I should be watching these goddamn movies, but... You know, one at a time, young grasshopper, because uh, I, I like to be able to enjoy it. Because, I mean, if I bought five movies tonight, I, I could watch all five tonight. And then it's over. The experience is over. And it's like, fuck. Like, uh, I'll be honest with you. That film cost me 37 bucks uh, Canadian after tax. But, you know, you're looking at that more or less if you're buying it online. Like, they don't carry those Vestron releases anymore, I noticed. Because they were charging fucking $70 for them and they're 35 bucks online. Like, ridiculous prices. It's crazy. Even the stuff there now is jokes. Like, I, I'm standing in there and, like, this fucking dude and his chick walk in and they're, like, talking. And this guy's kind of, like, you could tell he's, like, a horror fan. Or maybe, you couldn't really, no, I'm not saying you could tell he's a horror fan, but he, like, went right to the horror. And he, like, knew where the horror section was, so he's a fucking horror fan. And he's, like, talking to his girlfriend and he's, like, I overheard him saying, like, uh whatever it was, it was like 50, 50 something bucks or something. It was probably the maniac fucking thing that I was looking at. And he's like, he's like, that's fucking crazy. And I was like thinking in my head, like, man, you got it, man. Like it's, it's brutal here. It's brutal to be a movie fan in Canada because, uh, unless you, unless you just order them online, but I'm, I'm one of those assholes that is, I like to go into the movie store because I find shit that I wouldn't be looking for. If, if I was online, like going on Amazon, like scrolling through, and, like, you know, you kind of have to, like, have a, you know, you got to know what you're looking for, you know, unless you're looking for people that, people that bought this also bought that. And it's like, well, you know, people like that aren't fucking me. And I have my own interests, you know what I mean? Because I, I like everything from, like, these Yakuza films all the way to, like, 
you know, I just finished, not just, but like last week or last two weeks, I finished a, that cooking show on Netflix called uh, Final Table. Fucking amazing. It was amazing. I loved it. It was great. So my tastes vary between a lot of stuff, no pun intended. But uh, yeah, if, uh, if you have any like good recommendations for these Asian films, let me know or any good films in general. And uh, especially if they're, uh, you know, 70s, 80s stuff or 90s, because like when it comes to like the the Japanese stuff or, uh, you know, Asian stuff, I like to I like the stuff from the 90s the most, I would say. But this stuff from the 70s is just, it's brutal, man. It's so fucking good. And like I said before, like, check out Cops vs. Thugs. Because that one, I, I think Cops vs. Thugs is better than this. But this is also an anthology. So it's it's, it's kind of hard to compare the two, right? Like, if you compared this against, like, uh, Creep Show, uh, you couldn't really do that. You can't, can't do it. You can't do that. I th I think it's fair to compare Creep Show to say Asylum, where and I I would say in that case to me uh, I like Creep Show better, but I I could understand why people would like Asylum better if they did because it's just so fucking, it's 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 got Peter Cushing you know what I mean so anything with Peter Cushing is like a fucking, oh, man like I I could just sit around and just talk about this shit for hours man and I really want to do uh, a a live thing so. If, if anyone's ever down to like do a live thing like like where we like you know google hangout kind of thing like live podcast or whatever that would be so dope <clears throat> but we'd have to pick a time we'd have to plan this in advance like we'd have to seriously plan this like like seriously in advance like a week in advance or some shit because i'm a fucking busy motherfucker which i'm sure you are too you know whoever's watching this at this point but uh See, I'm running out of shit to talk about because I was just about to say, this fucking phone charger I got at the dollar store is six feet. Six foot fucking phone charger, man. What do you know about that? So, Yakuza Law. Do not sleep on this film. Uh, pick it up. I, I think it was just released. Uh, 2019, yeah. So, uh, I should point out that there is only one language, uh, which is Japanese and the subtitles are English, but... That's like that's a given, right? Like, uh, like I I was talking about this the other day to this guy. I was like, like when you're watching fucking movies, like this is my boss, and it's like who gives a fuck about that kind? Of, like if you can't get past that, like then I don't know what to say, man. Because there's so many good fucking movies out there that are foreign that the only way to enjoy them properly is to watch them with the. Uh, the subtitles like I would like I say this I've said this since I was like fucking 18 or whatever it was when I first like seriously got into the shit like the original Godzilla Gojira with fucking Jap with the Japanese language with English subtitles that is the way to watch it skip King of the Monsters it's fucking bogue man and that new that new fucking Godzilla King of the Monsters I wasn't the biggest fan of that either you know what I'm saying like I I, I think that uh it, it was okay, like, there was some really good shots, uh, but I, I hated the fucking cast, uh, I just, you know, if you want to watch a good movie from the last little while, watch John Wick 3, for fuck's sakes, because that movie is insane, so, that is all I have to say right now, thanks for watching, uh, Yakuza Law, you get it from Arrow Video, you get it on Amazon, you get it at your local video store if they carry that kind of stuff, and, uh, highly recommended film, and, uh, Thanks for letting me rant. If you watch this whole thing, I appreciate uh, the the therapeutic nature of talking to a camera. So, and I have a new phone, so the camera probably looks pretty deadly. Uh, hopefully, I don't get nailed for copyright for having this in the background. But, yeah. Adios.